Hi guys, welcome. Uh, in this video, I'm gonna read a chapter for you from this book. It's called 21 Miles of Scenic Beauty and then Oxnard Counter Stories and Testimonies by Martin Alberto Gonzalez. He is a local author here from Oxnard and he's done many presentations uh, talking about his book and a little bit about his life um, in a lot of schools, a lot of different places. So you might already be familiar with him or his book. Um, if it is, it's great. If it's not, that's totally fine. Um, so what I like about this book and one of the is that one of the major themes that I found about this book is um, it talks about you may have heard of or had experiences with negative narratives or negative reputation about Oxnard. Um, I have had personal experiences where people say like, oh, you're from Oxnard? Like, like it's a bad thing, right? Like a negative thing uh, to say or to be, or a negative place to be from, right? So what this book does is what he refers to as um, counter punches um, or counter stories to exemplify how beautiful Oxnard is and how beautiful the people of Oxnard are. Um, and each chapter he goes through and he talks about um, some specific stories that have happened. And um, so let's dive into it. Um, I'm only going to read one chapter and in other videos I'll probably read more. Um, so let's get started. This chapter is called La Playa, which means the beach. Um, so here we go. Segregation is alive and well at our local Silver Strand Playa in Oxnard, California, at the intersection of Victoria Avenue and San Nicolas Avenue near the corner store. Now, I'm not talking about legally sanctioned de jure segregation like Jim J or Jamie Crow laws that, inf that force brown and black folk to use separate facilities. Nothing like that. After all, old explicit racism is out and new hipster racism is in people cannot be openly messed up anymore they got to do it in secret rather i'm talking about socially accepted segregation you know the type that people have normalized the one which the people who are on top at the expense of others do nothing to prevent it or stop it you know the type that produces socially unjust outcomes and then directs blame at those who are already at the bottom for their lack of effort. One hot summer day, my partner Jesse pointed this out to me. She had just completed her first Chicana Chicano Studies course ever at CSUN, Cal State University Northridge, the epicenter of Chicano Chicana Studies. Fresh off her first year in college, to her, everything was wrong with the world. Oppression this, sexism that, Jesse was that type. Problematic was her favorite word. A fun ridden trip to a festival would boil down to a patriarchy and deconstruction, normative ways of thinking about gender. Anya could not go to Disneyland with her because all she would do is complain about how princesses reaffirm the idea that women should not be leaders and that they should be com complacent and wait for their husbands to save them. Anyways, La Playa became our safe haven during that during the summer because both of us lived as students in the San Fernando Valley throughout the year. With Tare Beach in sight as college students, we made it our priority to go to the beach as much as we could while we were home to make up for blistering hot days spent in the valley. One summer, Jesse and I went to the beach almost every single day. Everyday exposure to practices and norms of La Playa opened a door for Jesse to analyze the social injustices taking place. I swear she was more wary and observant than I than I trained so than a trained sociologist. Without a pen and paper, she would make observations and then bring them to light in order to start conversations about them. Constantly exclaimed to me, "Dang, you're so oblivious!" Whenever I did not catch someone being racist or offensive. On an ordinary hot summer day in Oxnard, Jesse and I went to the beach for a run. Gasping for air, we stopped to sit down on the rocks that separate the beach from the harbor. A perfect view of both the harbor and the beach. Or so I had thought, right before I began to meditate and think about how blessed I was to grow up in a city so close to La Playa, Jesse abruptly said, Look, can you believe it? Not knowing exactly what she was talking about, I quickly agreed. I know we're very blessed to live by this beautiful playa. 
But Jessie looked at me as if I had just stepped on her brand new white shoes. She smirked. No, fool. I'm talking about how messed up the playa is. Everyone, everyone at the Kitty Beach is brown, la raza, and everyone at the Silver Strand is white. Ain't that messed up? I made a quick observation and accompanied the frown on, on my face. How? I told her. They are just trying... They are just trying to enjoy their time at the beach. I don't see anything wrong with that. She shoved me gently. Open your eyes for once, Martin. I thought you took Dr. Tracy Buenavista's critical race theory course at CSUN. She continued inanimately. It, it's rarely natural that people separate themselves based on race. It is usually some government scheme, divide and conquer. At the end of the day, La Raza is negatively impacted, while the whites remain on top. Don't you see it? She asked impatiently, knowing that she was going to continue her racism tangent. I interjected, come on, here we go again. Every single time, you took one ethnic studies class and now you know everything. I'm serious, she exclaimed, to which I questioned. So how exactly is this messed up again? First of all, she said, let's start off with the name itself. Kitty Beach? Kitty? Really? She continued in her loud, sarcastic voice. I'm a grown-ass person. There are grown-ass people. I take care of my damn self. Don't be kidding me. As if I'm a competent or as if I need to be supervised like some type of animal or savage. Let me guess. Those people are uncivilized? Really, Jesse? You're tripping. I replied while I shook my head. They call it Kitty Beach because parents tend to take their kids there since that is where the harbor and the beach meet and there happens to be no waves thus safer the people there happen to be brown that's all nothing more nothing less see there's another problem she protested immediately what are they trying to say is that is that all la raza does is make babies what's next that they make babies purposely to take advantage of the welfare system and use up all their food stamps on all those chips and Kool-Aid jammers they are enjoying at the kitty beach. Jessie raised her eyebrows as she made duck lips. Jessie, you are over and analyzing this whole thing. Just enjoy the, the view, she interrupted. Oh, you mean the fact that this white beach has beautiful eye-opening 8 to 10 feet seemingly crystal clear waves while this brown kitty beach has toxic waste trailing from all these fishing boats that are in, in and out of the harbor? It's called environmental racism. Look it up. She had a point. I started at her thinking about I stared at her thinking about what she said and I was silent. She continued without skipping a beat. You know, I don't mess with oceanography or whatever that's called. But I do know that those waves are more than just to surf on or get knocked over with. They also filter the water. With the kitty beach, the science is easy. No waves, no filter. So all the toxins and nasty chemicals, or what am I call it, are funneled in and aren't funneled out since there aren't any waves. The toxins are concentrated in this little area of water. That's really harmful. It is kind of like concentrated poverty, you get it? I laughed. You had a go there, huh? What? She stared at me with a no you didn't face. You think I am lying? She continued aggressively. A few years ago, the Los Angeles Times published an article in which environmental experts tested bacteria levels of 250 beaches in California. And do you know which beach was at the top of the list? Let me guess, Kitty Beach. I said jokingly, not knowing the correct answer. That's right, she continued. As if it wasn't bad enough that we already have bad air quality because of these polluting power plants, Oxnard's Kitty Beach was named the most polluted beach in Southern California by an expert environmental group. Even our waters are polluted. And how many signs did you see up warning La Raza of this health hazard? None, not even in English, much less in Spanish. They don't care about these kids or these parents at the Kitty Beach because they know they all brown. Dang. I guess that is kind of messed up, I agree. They should at least tell them and give them a chance to make an informed decision as to whether they jump in this toxin-infested water. You guess, homie? You better know, she asserted while pointing at me with her index finger. But wait, there are more things that show that they don't care about us. Like what? I replied as I covered my eyes from the glaring sun rays. Well, let's start with the restrooms and showers. You see them over there? She pointed unapologetically. They recently renovated both at the White Beach. Women Silver Strand beachgoers can actually sit down while they pee without feeling all disgusted and nasty. Do you feel comfortable enough sitting on the toilet seats at the Kitty Beach? Hell nah, I laughed out loud. 
that's what I thought, she exclaimed in a high-pitched tone. We see this play out in society in general. The government invests in and takes care of places where white people reside and interact. By the same token, the government deinvests in sites that are heavily populated by communities of color. The formula is simple. Wherever white people go, money and resources follow. So are you telling me that if more and more white people were to go to the Kitty Beach, then it will get new bathrooms? I asked her to clarify that absurd statement. Mm-hmm. She nodded her head up and down. They have a lot of privilege, and as soon as they raise one concern, then it will be taken care of sooner rather than later. We've seen this happen before. Whenever La Raza raises an issue, people see it as a complaint. Oh, they want and ask for everything. But whenever white people raise an issue, it is seen as an actual concern and must be addressed. She gasps for air and then continued, shoot, they will for sure have signs up the next day after the request, the request warning other white families about the toxins in the water. Knowing the politics around here, I bet these signs will be in English only too. That's true, why doesn't Arasa just walk over and enjoy the cleaner I offered, but Jesse cut me off and finished my sentence with the words, wider beach? I was gonna say cleaner beach, but yeah, wider beach. I responded, you sound like Oxnard's Board of Education in the 70s when they were being sued by Juan Soria and other families for racially segregating students. The Board of Education members said, we aren't segregating students intentionally. Mexicans can move wherever they want to. They have the freedom to do so. Blah, 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 blah. Like, homie, it's not that simple. Rent is expensive and ain't nobody trying to give a qualified and educated Mexicana a good paying job. She insisted angrily. I stayed silent. Again, I thought about how this was starting to make sense. She's, she patted me softly in, in the back. I, also, in case you forgot, there's such a thing that's called racist landlords in Oxnard who do not give people of color a chance to live on their property, even if they can afford to do so. My mom, who both know is a single mo mother baller, is looking for and can afford a nice house in Oxnard. Despite having a promising conversation with the landlord over the phone, he decided not to let her rent his home after meeting her in person because my mom took my little brother, who looks black, to meet him. This is 2017. Discrimination with a smile, I swear, she said in frustration while her voice gradually became louder. Yeah, you told me about that. That sucks, I said empathetically as I try to comfort her. Not to dismiss anything you just said, but what does this have to do with the beach and La Raza walking over the cleaner beach? I asked innocently. That it's not that simple as just getting all your stuff and walking over to the cleaner white beach, she exclaimed and raised her voice. Have you ever played cumbia or chente out loud at this cleaner beach? White people stare at you like you are some type of alien or something, like they have never heard Selena before. That shit's degrading. So true, I laughed in agreement. But there you have Cody over there, bumping his freaking country music and people act like it's nothing, she said while smacking her lips. I don't know about you, but I, t I like to see to some cumbia and bachata while I enjoy my Arnold Palmer Arizona iced tea at the beach. I can't do that in, a in peace while I have these white people staring at me as if something is wrong with me. Like, nah, homie, something is wrong with you, she exclaimed as she pointed at the white surfers who had just passed us. Chill, I said, trying to calm her down. Yeah, that's true, though. I agreed and then asked her, what are some other ways in which the beach, this beach segregation stuff is messed up? Jessie squinted her eyes against the, the glistening sun and asked, do you see any lifeguards at the Kitty Beach? I detected a hint of disgust in her voice. I looked over the Kitty Beach and then replied, nope. Well, I think recently they built a lifeguard hut, but to be honest, I don't know if anyone is actually in there. There you go, she said uh, confidently as if her point was validated recently that's the key word probably after someone almost drowned i learned in my child development class that a child could drown in less than two inches of water from experience i know that kitty beach is only kitty two steps and in then after that it goes pretty deep the more you walk in of course the only thing kitty is that it does not have any waves but just because there aren't any waves doesn't mean somebody can't drown True. I feel like if they really cared about the people at the Kitty Beach, they'd have like five lifeguards. I said while well, I shrugged my shoulders in agreement. For real, they should for sure have more than one lifeguard since after all, there's a lot of kids there. They want to call it Kitty Beach, but ain't nobody want to kitty the kids, she said cleverly. You see that over there, pointing at the hot dog stand near the white beach? 
yeah it's super nice to have food nearby when you're swimming swimming and running gets gets you so hungry huh i added she laughed that's beside the point that's another way la raza at the kitty beach are discriminated against what how i asked impatiently as my eyes widened while jesse said must be nice to have immediate access to food on the beach people at the white beach do not have to cross the busy street in four-way stop sign to get their snacks from the corner store they have it right there on the sand on their laps like a luxury hotel i laugh knowing that we are talking about a hot dog stand and not some fancy food restaurant she continued without hesitation do you think they would allow the elotero to sell elotes and raspados at the kitty beach hell no she replied before i could even respond as soon as a few brown kids are spotted sucking on bright yellow juicy elotes the cops will be called and the raspados and elotes will be confiscated because it's illegal to sell those in oxnard but here you have this white lady selling hot dogs expensive as hot dogs at that on the beach in public in front of everyone with an official stand and sign shake my damn head she complained for real this should be illegal to sell hot dogs at that price i laughed at my own joke dang on a serious note that's messed up you know i suck at cooking but even i know that both hot dogs and elotes are boiled in water what's the difference why can't elotero sell hot elotes at the beach i wondered because this beach is racist af she replied without a smile hot dogs are a staple of white american foods while maize is a staple of mexican and indigenous foods how dare the we privilege elotes over hot dogs this is america she said sarcastically i laughed out loud knowing how pissed off she gets when people say this is america that sounds ridiculous but not far from being the truth the u.s is always trying to force people to assimilate and think that there is only one culture but for real though all this food talking making me hungry let's hit up tdm i suggest knowing that she would agree only if you agree to share that knowledge i just dropped on you while all your little mexican homies who na naively hit up the white beach every day she responds to it as she playfully pushed me away yeah i will only if you pay for my burrito